In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. I've been asked to talk more about the staircases in the woods. So, let's talk about the staircases in the woods. This staircase is safe. This is not a fey portal. This clearly was put here by humans. It used to be part of a building. The staircase is safe. These stairs are clearly part of a walking trail of some kind, or they're in a park. These stairs are safe. This is not a fey portal. I mean, climb at your own risk, but these are also not a fey portal. You can adventure. You can go play. You can climb on these. These stairs are safe. I mean, I personally am not walking up this staircase because I don't know what the hell it was supposed to be or what they intended on doing with it. But given that it's not clean, it's not perfect, and there's stuff all over it, largely it's probably a safe set of stairs to play on. It may even just be some kind of overlook. But I would label this one safe. See, the dangerous stairways in the woods that we're referring to are going to look pristine and out of place. They're going to be perfect. It's going to look like not even a leaf dare fall on a step. Those are the dangerous ones. Those are the ones that you don't climb up and walk up or, or touch. Those are the ones that make you disappear. Those are the ones that park rangers are afraid of and tell stories about finding in the woods, especially during searches for missing people. The ones shown previously that are decrepit, falling apart, they're obviously part of ruins. They were built there for a trail. It was a building project that somebody started and never finished. Those are fine. Those are a free game. You can climb up those. You can play on those. You can have an adventure. Those are fine. The ones that look perfect are the ones that have the scary portal at the end. I'm really upset that they didn't show what face staircases look like. I'm not even sure if I believe in that kind of stuff, to be honest. I do find the lore behind it extremely fascinating, though. Do any of you guys have any stories about face staircases that you found in the woods? Or have you heard about this before? Because I've heard of this before. I just never really seen any clear evidence of what would be classified as a staircase of the phase. Check this out, y'all. Caught the Starlink, right? Check this out. This is not a satellite. This is not a satellite, y'all. There's no way this can be a satellite. Because, look, there, it's got, like, stars in it as well. Look, can you see that? It's like a mirror effect. It's like a mirror camouflaging effect so you can't see it. This is, this is a ship. This is a ship. Y'all see that? Look at that. I told you these people be lying about what they're doing. That is a ship. They're trying to hide. Look, look, look at these star particles in it. Not these windows with lights, but there's, it's like cloak, cause ain't no way Elon Musk can create something like that, cause his cyber truck is not even bulletproof. You know what I'm saying? He tried, he tried to show us his cyber truck was bulletproof, but that window broke, the door broke. Yeah, this is literally a ship, y'all, cause I caught this the other day going to Florida and it disappeared in the middle there. What satellite is disappearing? You see, you see, I caught this in the highway and it literally disappeared in my point of view. It didn't, I didn't, it didn't continue in the sky or nothing. It literally just vanished like into the sky, literally vanished y'all. That is not no satellite. That is a ship. And I believe this is the cigar ship that they have been telling us about. This is the cigar ship that they have been telling us about that. They're saying that the Anunnaki are on. I mean, what do you guys think? You know what I'm saying? Cause all they do is lie about everything. All they do is lie about everything. That is not no satellite. We all know what satellites look like, and there's no way satellites will be flying that low. That low, y'all. Like, that's even lower than planes. To me, I think that those are Starlink satellites, or satellites in general. But they do look extremely close to the ground. Let me know in the comments what you guys think this is. I think that it's still a Starlink satellite string. A mystery of the mummy? It's like the cursed mummy or something. But it's basically talking about the story of this dude in the late 1800s. He found this, this, this whole story where he was funded by this man in England to find this one pharaoh mummy or whatever. Mm -hmm. He found it and was like, probably shouldn't open Open that it's this whole series of events where he opened it they opened it they were sending it back to england but like basically everyone that was involved in excavating this mummy and this pharaoh died like in the oh, most no. bizarre ways and the most bizarre of the ways was the man who funded it 
Yeah. He had some like immune disorder or something. He went to Egypt to like see what the guy found. He got bit by a mosquito on the cheek. Uh -oh. mm, that'll do it. It scabbed over. And then it says he was shaving and cut it yeah. and got infected. And he died three weeks later. <gasps> But when they examined the mummy, this is weird. The mummy had a scar on the exact no. same place oh, where the no. guy cut his cheek. Weird, weird. But there's different theories of like that they potentially like breathed in toxic. Yeah, yeah. that we couldn't. That probably like, could have wiped know. out a ton of people back then. Who knows? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how germs work like that, but like you know, but that seems unsanitary. What's a gem? <laughs> so many weird theories about mummies and curses and things like that. I always found it extremely interesting. Like, how do you even make that work? Do you have to pray to make a curse work? Or is it just a chemical concoction? Or do you have some kind of insight to another realm of existence that allows you to be able to grant these permissions? Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you so much for watching. Londoners were treated to a weird sight on May 25th, 2024. Dozens of witnesses capture what looked like some sort of craft on fire, possibly crashing to earth. The problem is, as you're watching this video, it makes a sharp turn, almost like it's controlled. So many questions arise as to what did these people capture? What was in their skies? And did this thing crash land? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Oh my fucking God, there's a fucking plane or something on fire. Where's it gone? What the fuck? What in fuck's name is that? Holy shit fuck. What the fuck is that? What in fuck's name is that? Nah. Holy shit. You know, other than the language, that is a pretty interesting video. It does look kind of like a plane burning, but the fire placement is so uniformed and it's odd. I really have no clue what this could be. It could be either a group of missiles, drones that are caught on fire, or maybe even a satellite. Let me know in the comments of what you guys think that this is, because that is an odd anomaly. I think JFK is still alive, and that guy was an alien. Why? JFK's wife's pink coat that she was wearing right beside when he got a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were in the car. Yeah, it's hidden in a vault right now because JFK's blood splattered all over it. And mm. they're going to release it to the public in, uh, I don't know, like 100 years, they said. So maybe even after we die. Word. But why are they only releasing it now? What is on that coat? And I've seen the comments and they're like, it's alien blood. That shit is alien blood, bro. Oh, because <laughs> it might not be him. Yeah, that ass. But even still, it could just be a body double, bro. It could. presidents dead ass have that. Yeah. If you were that hated as a president or that hated as as somebody in power mm -hmm. the only way to exit properly would to be like faking your death that that's actually a really good theory i never would have thought of not necessarily thinking that jfk was an alien but thinking that maybe that was a body double and he faked his own death because he wanted out of the office because people were actually out to get him. I would have never have thought of that. That's actually really interesting. And the reason why they're holding the dress is because when they did the blood samples on it, they found out that it actually was not JFK. So that if they released that to the public, then it would be fully exposed that JFK's out there living his life somewhere. That's an interesting theory. I've never thought of that. Okay, so clearly here, see how... See how she's trying to put the dress down because she wants it to see here. Look, look. And this is what I don't get. I don't get this. So it's a, a clear picture of Jesus, okay? What I don't understand is why is it that everybody here on this carpet, the festival that they're going to, everybody can go and look at and they have these priest ones and they're all provocative looking. Now, you know, everybody to each his own, everybody can dress as how they dress, right? So why can't they let her just show the trail of her dress, right? Isn't this supposedly supposed to be a free country, right? We're supposed to be able to believe what we want to believe, but yet she can't show that. Everybody on the red carpet can show everything and do anything how they want to. 
and they can have devil horns, right? That's a, a faith in itself. But yet she can't do that? Please explain to me. I don't understand. I don't understand. That is odd. I don't necessarily know if it's a good thing to have a dress with Jesus' face on it, but with all things considering where people are dressing up as demons and basically worshiping the devil, I do not see why it would be such a big deal to have a dress with that face on it. And it seems like when she was trying to reveal it, the dress, People were really getting uncomfortable about that. It just makes me wonder if it's just a bunch of sinners and they know that they're sinning and it makes them feel uncomfortable being around such a holy icon, you know? But let me know your theories as to why people were having such a hard time letting this person do what she was trying to do. Shit's getting weird. Part infinity. The putty, which is considered a beginner's cave by most. The main areas of the cave were interesting for everyone. There was the maze room which had openings and tunnels leading around large boulders. There was a large ramped area called the slide, where the entire room sloped down at a 45 degree angle with a rope to guide you down. There were also well-known areas that were more challenging, like the birth canal or the aorta crawl. They had heard stories about the birth canal and consulted the map for its location. It was known to be a long, tight passage with a particularly tight squeeze near the end. <coughs> That's what he said. These areas were tight and difficult to pass, so only more experienced cavers would be attempting to squeeze through these passages. Even with the known challenges, people still found themselves stuck in tight squeezes in these tunnels. Nutty Putty had just recently been opened back up to the public, after being closed for several years because of cavers getting stuck in these difficult squeezes. They were passable for some, but others would find that their shoulders or hips would just not pass no matter how hard they pulled against the rock. After wedging themselves in the narrow space, they were completely stuck, requiring serious assistance to inch out backwards. All right, let me spare you all the rest of that because it's, it's, it's rough to watch. It, the documentary is about this, this guy named John Jones. Um, he's a caver, and he went to that area of caving, and he got stuck in a place where he probably shouldn't have been in. Um, and he got stuck upside down. And he was upside down for like 20 something hours and the rescuers couldn't get him out. So he's just, he's in there. He's still there till this day. Uh, yeah. I don't know how y'all do that. Like how do caver, how do you guys, is that fun or something? I just don't get it. Like I genuinely want to talk to a caver. Okay. I want that to be one of my episodes on my podcast. Um, I want to talk to a caver because I want to know the thought process. Like why? Because that doesn't look fun to me at all. You know, I guess it's like rock climbing, right? Is it the same thing? Same kind of feel? Same kind of rush? I don't know, man. It's... Oof. I don't get it. I agree 100% with him. That does not look fun to me at all. Though I enjoy watching that content and learning about certain cave systems like the Nutty Putty Cave, that's really crazy. I would never be able to do anything like this. And I do not understand where people get enjoyment out of this. And I would also like to talk to someone that does this professionally or just as a hobby. And some of the tunnel systems have such horrible names like the birth canal. Why would you want to try to go through a tunnel called the birth canal? That just sounds like a horrible time. He shouldn't believe in gravity. Gravity's not real, at least not the way they explain it. A lot of what Terrence Howard is saying is going way over people's heads. The most ironic part of that is the people whose heads it's going over think they're smarter than him. When Terrence Howard says one times one can't equal one, he's not giving you bro science. He's making a larger critique of the entire multiplication function across all integers. Because when you look at two and everything beyond that, and you compare it to one and its relationship to its inverse function, it doesn't add up. If you put multiplication on a graph next to an addition graph, it doesn't make sense. Now, when Terrence Howard starts talking about gravity, he again critiques it from an educated perspective. When Terrence talks about gravity and the problems with it, he's talking about the biggest, one of the biggest problems in quantum physics right now that the best and brightest minds across the planet can't solve. Why is gravity so weak? It shouldn't be. It should be very powerful, much more powerful than it is right now. It's gotten to the point that quantum physicists have theorized that gravity is a force leaking from another dimension. That's how much it doesn't make sense. Now, side note, if you want to watch some of my previous videos, I do talk about my theory as to why this is happening. 
that the force of gravity is being stretched across the entire area of the planet, and so it has to be divided by the planet and its area. And so if you combined all the gravitational pull in any given space on the Earth and put it together, it would probably equal out. Basically, they're not using enough vectors and they're not using area as a coefficient in the equation of gravity. Therefore, it's equaling out to being very weak because it has a very weak pull on a given area. But if you added it up across the entire Earth, it would be quite strong. So as gravity stands, yes, it's not real. That's not gravity. It doesn't exist the way they're explaining it because there's only two fundamental forces, expansion and contraction. Gravity and electromagnetism are an expression of it at this macro level. Strong and weak nuclear force are an expression of it at the micro level. So like I said, a lot of people will just be like, well, he thinks this and he thinks that, but you don't give him any context. Give it context. If you're going to make fun of the guy, try reading his papers first. If you're going to make fun of the guy, listen to the entire explanation. Don't just take a little sound bite and say, see, he said this, so he's stupid. Or see, he said this, now I can't listen to him. There's a lot more going on here. I'm not saying he's right about everything. But when I said he's single-handedly saving the world, he needs his day in the sun. Because a lot of what he's saying is extremely important. Sure, he might be a psyop. Okay, yeah, anybody could be a psyop. Be careful when you listen to him. Right? Take everything with a grain of salt, but then think about it yourself. Do a little research if you're interested and understand that something incredible can come out of this. When we understand that the entire reality is made of music and then we can learn how to play that music, we can be masters of reality. I just want to make it clear. I do not think that I'm smarter than Terrence Howard. I think Terrence Howard has a very brilliant mind and he's got a great perspective on reality and life. I am just simply not as intelligent to comprehend everything that he's laying down on the table. So it just makes it hard for me to believe just simply because I'm not smart enough to know how to believe in what he's talking about. And that's why I enjoy listening to what he has to say because it's all really fun theory to me and it helps me learn new aspects of how things work if that makes any sense i know that's weird and man let me tell you after this joe rogan podcast it was kind of like when the cat williams one went down all there is on tiktok right now is just this topic so i'm trying not to pick too many more of these you'll probably start seeing less and less of the terrence howard videos but there is still some here and there that i like to play because they bring up really good points the darkest piece of lore I have is about this Egyptian film that they had to cancel because, like, it was upsetting the evil spirits that they were conjuring. I know, this sounds like a, a long shot, but listen up. So this happened back in the 70s, and they wanted it to be in the style of, like, a very, very old Egyptian movie. They wanted this movie to be, like, creepy, but, like, very, very accurate. And they found groups of people that were really familiar with the ancient Egyptian religions and like how they practice things and their rituals and stuff. And they wanted to incorporate those rituals into the movie, like the real rituals. And these rituals were only used like back in ancient Egyptian times. They're not used anymore. And then weird stuff started happening on set. And at first they didn't make the correlation. Then a bunch of people who were involved in the movie started getting really sick. And they were bringing in all of these health experts and no one could figure it out. Like literally no one knew what they had. And then they start to bring in more health experts because they still can't figure out what this disease is. But it's like a plague almost. And then they realize we haven't seen this disease since ancient Egyptian times. And those rituals were probably conjuring something up. What rituals were they doing and what were the rituals purpose? Were they bad rituals or were they rituals for success or were they just imitating rituals in the movie to make it seem authentic and they had no clue what the rituals that they were doing were? Which would make no sense. Have any of you seen this movie that this person's talking about? They didn't announce the name, but if you know what it is, and I'm sure you know what it is. I have no clue. Yeah, we must definitely be in a new time and space because look at these huge moths, you guys. Look. These things are literal Pokemons. See, I be telling you guys, these TV shows are literally telling us about our lives. Because remember, if giants existed back then, then I'm sure these things were giants as well, y'all. These things were giants as well. And they show us these in these TV shows and these movies. So I believe because we have entered a new frequency, right? New vibration on earth. These ancient animals are coming back. 
And look at this. Look at these two beautiful animals just. Oh my god. So apparently this is them mating and this one seems bigger than that one. So maybe that's the female. Maybe that's a female. She looks like she's spreading her wings for him. You know what I'm saying? You know, like she's happy. Mm -hmm, you know? But uh look at this, y'all. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I know a lot of people are irritated with this guy's content, but sometimes he makes me smile. He says some of the most off the wall things. But onto the video itself, those are some really big moths. I kinda just wanna pick one up and pet it. They look so soft and fluffy. And I'm not a hundred percent sure if this is true to what the video says where it says there's a new giant moth species found in the woods. I do not know if that's a new discovery or not, but it, nonetheless, it's an amazing looking creature. A massive underground structure that is four times the size of the Egyptian pyramids that is protected by the military in Alaska. On May 27, 2020, Nathan Campbell was dropped off in one of the most remote parts of the world, Denali National Park. He was there to embark on a mission to find the Black Pyramid. The Black Pyramid is a legendary underground structure rumored to be massive and ancient at least thousands, if not millions, of years old. But he unfortunately went missing, never to be seen again. The Black Pyramid is part of a broader set of theories about secret military installations in Alaska, like HARP. The pyramid allegedly disrupts electromagnetic fields and is strategically positioned for global military advantage. Reports of its existence gain attention from an anonymous naval captain. The retired captain called into Coast to Coast and stated that during the 80s, he worked on a top secret radar installation in Alaska. He noticed a mysterious, highly powerful electromagnetic source disrupting his base's aircraft and communication for years. Suspicions of this pyramid were validated when, in 1992, scientists studying shockwaves from a Chinese underground nuclear test recorded a grainy pyramid-shaped spot of interference 700 feet below the surface of interior Alaska. No one knows if Campbell truly believed in the pyramid, during the search, they found some of his gear, but no sign of him. There is a thing about a guy who used to work in the Navy in the 70s. They placed an acoustic sensor device all throughout the ocean floor in the certain areas. This was to map the ocean floor, detect submarines, and find another anomalies and stuff. The technology covers a large portion of the ocean floor and has given the Navy an amazing perspective of their underwater terrain. One of the contacts while in the Navy who is responsible for monitoring the sensors and everything, they would discuss underwater submersible objects that detected that would travel at thousands of miles per hour underwater. What are you talking about? He said, he said they also have detected various structures underwater that are active and that are they stay clear of. And so those might be like volcanoes or whatever, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're detecting actual anomalies this underwater. Came out recently? This is a report load from a guy that worked at, in the Navy in the 1970s. That was in the 70s? They were tracking this stuff? When they placed the sensor devices on the ocean floor. That is so yeah. cool. So, Just, like, I, you know how you get stoked about space? Yeah. I get stoked about the ocean. Well, those are probably like alien stuff. Yes! Oh. <laughs> They're meeting. Dude, the ocean freaks me out way more than space. An interesting video is coming out of Joaquin Miller Park in Oakland, California, where a group of witnesses were hiking and said they discovered the top of a pyramid. Oddly, it's triangular in shape, and it does look like a pyramid. The question, though, is, what is this? What is poking out of the ground, and did this suddenly appear? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Come on, bro. It's a pyramids in Oakland, man. Look, it's a pyramids in East Oakland, man. Good boy, ain't you? Look at that. This the lonely land for real. Look at that. You definitely cannot deny that that is a pyramid of some sort. I do not know if that's a recently made one, but that's definitely a pyramid structure. There has to be more to it than just that top piece. Have any of you heard about this pyramid structure? Is there any follow-up to this? Let me know in the comments because that's got to be something. Let y'all know right now. I'm going to let y'all know right now. Marble. All right? Marble. That thing reminds me of marble. Okay, maybe War of the Worlds in Marvel. What y'all look at this? God is good. I'm still on God's side. Y'all tell me that this don't remind me of Marvel's whenever low key had uh, opened up the fucking ozone and had all these people come out. And then on War of the Worlds when they had those freaking things zap up all the people. 
I mean, it's definitely off-putting, but I'm almost 100% certain that that's a kite. Let me show you something real quick. Hold on. Let me show you something. <sighs> Look, y'all see this? Look at this. Now, let me show you. Look at this. Osteoporosis, bone health, blood sugar, urinary tract infection, prevents and treats cancer, prevents iron deficiency, hypertension, abuse immune system. Look at this, lactation, inflammation and arthritis, harvesting. I have never personally consumed dandelion. I hear people say all the time that dandelion tea or dandelion bits on top of a salad is extremely good for you. I've just never tried that. Have any of you guys had any experience or any luck with trying this? If so, let me know because I'm kind of interested in it. I just need more validation and proof from people first before I go out and try my own dandelions because I would have no problem growing this kind of stuff. It grows everywhere around me. The Lake Neos disaster. Imagine the scary feeling of you're in this tiny little village, right? Got you it. wake up and you walk outside and it's quiet. Everyone that used to be walking around, bustling around in the mornings, not there. Goes and knocks on the neighbor's door. No one's answering. Peeks in the house. People are dead. Whoa! <gasps> this happened a long time ago. August 21st, 1986. This guy goes around and he's noticing a lot of people are missing. A lot of people are not where they should be. So they're going around. Police are from other counties are heading over to the city. 1,700 people just mysteriously dead in this tiny town. All of the livestock dead. What? All because of a nearby lake. And it took them a while to find out why. Because this lake periodically belches a cloud of invisible carbon dioxide gas that suffocates everything within a 16 mile radius. <gasps> oh, Literally my worst fear. And so all of these people died and their livestock and people didn't know for months, I believe. Yo, that's wild. Yeah, super scary. That's crazy. Could you imagine just, just minding your own business one day and just being like, oh, wow, I'm having a little hard time breathing. And then next thing you know, you're doing the permanent sleep. Damn, Didn't I just tell y'all that there was something night. going on with the ocean and that the well was trying to tell us something? Listen, Fast listen. approaching the Mahia coastline. <laughs> This local watching from the top of the hill. We thought, nah, this is odd. This isn't normal. Fascination quickly turning to concern. We're gonna get beached, mate. Oh my god! Oh, he's gonna get stuck. The 45-odd false killer whales and one botnose dolphin first stranded before 2 p.m. yesterday at the rocky beach in Taylor's Bay. They were screaming. It is probably the thing that's stopping me from sleeping because you can hear the screaming in your ears. Um, they were making more than a noise. They were really yelling out for help. I While told you! are aren't uncommon, I told this species is extremely rare. With the tragic events that unfolded, you know, there's got to be uh, something in the haystack to look for that is a bit of positivity, and we, we hope to learn a lot more. Like why these creatures stranded in the first place. I put up the video about the whales in the ocean, and I told you I was trying to tell us something. And the last other video I dropped about the ocean, I told y'all. What's making them want to go onto the beach? What's making them want to leave the water? Is it getting too hot? Is it getting too polluted? Is there something deep down in the water that's waking up and they're all just afraid and trying to get out of there before they get eaten? Like there's so many questions that I have about this. Let me know in the comments on what you guys think because there's gotta be something going on. Or maybe this is just a part of nature and this happens all the time just within the span of years and years and years. We find these very, very bizarre uh, ruins of staircases it carved into these massive, massive, massive amounts of rock. Okay. And the stairs are upside down. The rock that they built on in the, these boulders outside of Oyete Tambo and Saskiwaman is like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tons. Okay. The staircase is upside down on it. Okay. It looks like that massive stone as big as like this building was toppled was like literally thrown upside down and now the staircase is staircase is on the wrong side what kind of catastrophe or tsunami could move like a 200 ton rock and flip it like a like nothing that's the kind of catastrophes we're talking about yeah something what civilizations like lake titicaca that we're going to talk about that are over twelve thousand feet had tsunamis high enough i believe to wipe them all out
Man, that's really scary to think about. Waves that can wipe out whole mountains? That would be crazy to witness. Or just crazy to live in a time if that ever happened. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed any of the clips that we watched today, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.